don't know why none of us saw it coming. Maybe it's because the night was so perfect. Freshly fallen snow with not a breath of wind. The kind of late December sky only a kid could love. A perfect night for gathering as a group and visiting the houses in our neighborhood. A perfect night for caroling. Now, never mind that none of us had ever regaled anyone with Christmas tied door to door before. How hard could it be? Besides, we'd seen it in plenty of movies. We'd read about it in books. We would know instinctively how to play it. And we would make up for our uh, lack of experience with our purity of heart for all to hear. Besides, we'd, uh, we'd take the kids with us. They could melt any Scrooge's hardened heart. On a night so perfect, how could any of us have known? How could we guess what would happen? It was, after all, Christmas, the one time of every year for wishing well and holiday cheer. When we were kids, we never went caroling door to door. We were knee deep in snow, building a fort or lying on our backs, making snow angels, staring up at Andromeda or Cassiopeia, though we didn't know them by name. Instead, the stars looked like heaven's seraphim, holding candles for the Christ child to see. Or so they told us in church. Caroling was for the old folks, along with chocolate liqueurs and donuts filled with prunes and other adult culinary perversions, which whispered a loss of innocence to our deafened ears. For we could hear only jingled bells and reindeer songs at that age. There'd be plenty of time for sugar-free candy and other adult stuff a long, long way in our future. But right now, now, as kids, we cared only about what might be discovered under the two or three indoor trees put up by our parents and uncles and family's best friends. Trees decorated with tinsel and lights and bearing wondrous fruit with our names on it. Packages so heavy with paper and bows that they dropped to the floor and carpeted the shadow of the tree with the wild possibilities in a young child's mind. And then it came, the knock on the door. The neighbors were here, all bundled and trundled from down the street. One by one, we'd follow each other through the new blazed path in the drifted snow, like happy corpuscles rushing toward the beating rhythm of some immaculate heart. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way, ha, ha, ha. When we were kids, it was different, all mixed up together, the toys, the candy, baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph. Our dreams morphed freely from snowmen to wise men, from Santa to the Archangel Gabriel. So completely had our church wrapped itself around the corporal delights so as to steal with them unbidden into our greedy little hearts. And it worked. Why did the baby Jesus have nowhere to stay? How does Santa know where we live? How could a star guide the wise men to Jesus? Before Rudolph, who led? Donder, Blitzen? A beautiful sight. We're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. Our first stop is drawing near, and it's about time. Trudging through the deep snow has stolen our wassailing breath, and we stand together for a moment, catching it back for our first performance of the night. The kids are busy pelting themselves with snowballs and diving into the drifts, but are duly gathered and soon assembled among us as our group, young and old, stands rested, wide-eyed, and quite unsure of where to begin. So then... This is it, our first foray into the rarefied celestial air of angel voices raised in songs of praise. We will raise our voices to join in the sublime transcendence of voices past from long before the great Gothic cathedrals of Notre Dame and York, right through the Morbin Tabernacle and Crystal Cathedral, and even encompassing Pink Floyd in their more corally exotic display. Hey, teacher, leave those kids alone. Except for one thing. Nobody had considered what we would sing, or even if we could sing. Thankfully, our soul-depressing stare into the abyss did not last long. Angie again. 
when are we going to sing? Right now, dear, was the answer, and we did. A voice from within our grouping, or maybe it wasn't, it didn't sound familiar, said lowly and without inflection, jingle bells, and that was all it took. No need to get the pitch, no deep breath and glance at each other to sync up. We just did it, and we did it with all the gusto of a midnight choir on Mad Dog 2020. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, and hey, we were doing it. We were singing together. Our voices raised in song from our little corner in the ages old cosmic choir. Until, bam! The heavy wooden door slam of our first visitation stopped us in mid-jingle. Except for the anemic trail off of neighbor Jim, whose earmuffs delayed the concussion of the slam only slightly as he sang jingle all the way. Now, I'm a great believer in perseverance and stick to as the terminally unhip might say. It took Edison over a thousand tries to get the light bulb right. Try, try, again. And we did. Three more times till we got to the big house. Three more plaintive attempts to connect through song with our farther neighbors and amongst ourselves, near neighbors all. Angie again. Why don't they like us? As we wended our knee-deep way to the big house, those little girl words hung suspended, frozen in the crisp air above us. Why indeed, came the professorial reply from the trudging professor, now retired. Actually, our last three performances were in no way similar to the door slam of the first. They were met with something more akin to ambivalence, or more precisely complete ambivalence, or even more specifically, complete l'ennui, as our French professor, now retired, might put it. When we were kids, Christmas was the best day of the year, though Halloween, with its orgy of free candy, would always be hard to beat. And our birthdays, with all the presents and the big party, would surely rank in the top two favorite days of the kid calendar. But there was something special about the way Christmas was all of our birthdays, all on the same day. Sure, we weren't the center of attention the way we were on our birthday, but Christmas had the same amount of presents, the same sense of uh, unreal gaiety. Merry Christmas was as good as happy birthday to our ears, because we knew we would all share in the greed and the gluttony together, kids and adults alike, from baby Lucy's sugar rush to Aunt Becky's dry wine blush, and Uncle Andy's whiskey sour slush, and in later years, the whiff of Mary Jane, the college girl in dreadlocks next door, as she stood smoking behind the garage and stared up at Andromeda and Cassiopeia and actually knew their names. And then we were there, the big house, the biggest in the neighborhood, the biggest in our part of town, didn't know the people, just moved in hatchet man CEO, we were told. Maybe that focused us, I don't know. But without our usual lyric searching hesitation, we launched directly into Silent Night, and it was beautiful. It was the most beautiful song we'd ever heard. Every note sublime, every pitch perfect. We sang as one the most beautiful Christmas song we knew. We dared not look around at each other as the second verse approached, lest we break the spell. And miraculously, the words came to us, the second verse. Shepherds quake at the sight. Glories stream from heaven afar. We sang as ultra-humans that night, transmogrified into angels. When we finished, we listened for a moment as our celestial voices slowly decayed in the frigid air above us. And then she whispered, little Angie whispered, happy birthday, baby Jesus. Well, not a dry eye on that porch, I can tell you. Except for the boys, with their sugar plum stuffed BB gun pumped brain stems, useless for anything but what was waiting for them under their two or three favorite trees in the world that night. 
but the rest of us stood there beaming with complete and total well-being. Our goodwill spread far and wide at that moment, wide around the earth to every man, woman, child, and indoor dog in the world, no matter what their race or religion, and as far into the past as time would allow, as we thought of pilgrims and immigrants and the old countries, and kings and queens and the brown hills and blasted mountains of the Holy Land, baby Jesus' land, the land where Jesus was born. Bah, humbug. What? Huh? Again, muffled from inside the house. Bah, humbug. A jingle of what, sleigh bells? No, door chains and key locks. A twist of the knob and the door jerked open. Get off my lawn! We just had it seated. Get off my lawn! And then, just before the huge door shut, Bah! Humbug! Slam! When we were kids, we didn't care much about where the presents came from, just as long as they came. Santa Claus, Baby Jesus, it was all the same to us, though we always knew that Mom and Dad were pulling strings for us far behind the scenes of wrapping paper and bows. Strings we later would learn were connected to Christmas bonuses or extra tips. Or all too often, we were later horrified to learn second mortgages or reluctant signatures on high-interest loan papers. I don't know what we would have done if we knew. Maybe nothing. Maybe we'd demand the cavalry set and the talking dolls just the same. But as it was, our parents spared us that Faustian deal. We know we'd be doing our own adult deals at Christmas soon enough. I don't remember which of us started the laugh at the big house that night. It wasn't a kid, I know that much. It was an adult laugh. A laugh stabbed with the irony only an older person can know. And then, in the middle of that laugh, just as it was about to expire of its own accord, Mark, the lawn guy and near neighbor, said, I put this lawn in myself. They knocked me down. I didn't make a nickel on this job. Bedlam unbridled hysteria. Every adult would-be songster at that moment or soon to follow gasped, gasped for air to replace the explosion of laugh that had gushed from deep within their lungs and souls. Choking and wheezing, we coughed and hacked our way back to breath as the mania possessed us. All thoughts of presence died as the kids among us stared wide-eyed at their roaring and gasping parents and adult friends. We aren't kids anymore. We know about the world now. We know about people in the world. And Christmas? Well, some people don't even know about Christmas and don't even care. And some people don't even care about us either. Some people halfway around the world, and some people in the big house down the street. We used to be one nation under a familiar God, but now we are not. And our God is nowhere to be found. We've split ourselves in two. Now we are rich or not quite poor. And our new God is a frowning God placed among us by neighbors we thought we knew. Not halfway across the world, but people in the next house or pew. One nation under God, indivisible, walking in a winter wonderland. We marched in quiet thought away from the big house, back to the party where cold punch and warm cheer awaited us. Every once in a while, an adult would chuckle to themselves, causing mirth in others, and finally, a response from little Angie. You people are crazy. Well, I guess we were all a little crazy that night. We had watched in unguarded silence as our collective past slipped a little farther away from us all before we even knew such a thing could happen. Silent night. Holy night. But I knew 
As it started to snow and the kids chased opened mouth to catch a flake, I knew deep within my American heart that no matter what had happened to us that night that we would be okay. That lust for money and a vengeful God would not rule the day in our American future. Not as long as Angie was there, swept up and bundled by her trudging father. Her eyes closed, pure white breath floating from her opened mouth. And I knew it too when I saw another white puff from another mouth across the backyard. It was Mary Jane, the college girl, smoking behind the garage, staring up at the darkened sky looking for the star of Bethlehem and wondering what it might mean if she found it on one perfect, silent night like this.